Another good way to help you facilitate the learning process and getting familiar with motions and operations and other basically shortcut keys inside of Vim is to use something like an extension called hard time, which will basically disable some of the crutches, things that actually are difficult to work with, which would be if I want to move up here and I just use the arrow key to go all the way up to the top of this file because I want to modify this line, or maybe I want to go up a little bit here. So that's a very inefficient way to move around. Instead, you could use something like Shift M here will jump you down to the middle of the file. Shift L will go down to the bottom. Shift H will go to the top. It's a much better way to move around. So this hard time extension will take some of those crutches away and others, it will actually just limit your usage. So if I come up here and uncomment this line here, this will set it up when I restart. All right, so now it should be enabled, which means if I just hold down an arrow key, you can see right away it's disabled. I can't even move up or down the line at all. Can't move left or right either. So the arrow keys are completely gone at this point in time. And of course you could use the H, J, L, and K keys to move around. I could move right. But after about four or five key presses, you can see I get capped out here. So I can only move up four lines and then I have a reset period where I have to wait a certain amount of time or I have to use a better key combo to unlock things for me to be able to use that key again. So if, for example, I do JJJJJ, I'm locked out, wait enough time, JJJJJ again, still locked out. If I do 2J, I can jump down though right away. So I'm going to go KKKKK, locked out 2K, lets me jump up right away. I'll do this again here. So I'll go KKKKK, locked out 2K, jumps me up, 4K jumps me up. So when you start to use a number followed by J, you can release it then because that's a good way of doing things to jump up four lines or six lines instead of just one line at a time. And then always in the bottom here, you can see output messages. By default, these are enabled to explain what the issue is and why you were capped out in this case. And then there are other keys as well, like hitting the return key to move down a line. That'll cap out. And now if I use L to try and move a lot to the right, you can see it caps out here. What am I supposed to use instead? Well, I could use something like W or E or B. I could do Shift W. I can move around with word motions instead. That's a much more efficient way. I could do three and I could do W. I could even do three and L here, as long as I'm not smashing the L key and holding that down forever. You can see once it times out though, I can move on again by just using a number. And that's because it's trying to encourage you to develop the good habit of jumping around to exactly where you need to go, especially when it comes to the W, B, and E keys to move between words. Or of course you could use F here to find the next instance of a letter like F, E, F, E again, finds the next E, F, E again. I could do two shift F and E here to jump back two E's. Those are definitely good habits to develop. And then in addition to just blocking and restricting certain keys, there's actually some where it's gonna give you recommendations. For example, if I wanted to get rid of this package here, the Lua plenary package, I could, of course, try to come over here and, well, then I'm capped out to get rid of this by coming here and do D and capital W. That doesn't exactly do what I want, though. Instead, I might want to do something like D and then I to get rid of the inner word and then W. And you can see in the lower left, it's suggesting here, use CIW instead, because right now, if I want to go back into like an insert mode, I'd have to do another I on the end here. So it's suggesting instead, I could do a CIW right here and get rid of that inner word or a CIW capital, gets rid of the whole thing. And then forget the mouse, you can't use that to save you either. You can try and click around all you want. That thing is disabled like the arrow keys. And then some key combos like deleting the rest of this line, I could do D and then dollar to delete through the end of the line. However, as you can see in the lower left here, I could have just used capital D instead. I could use a single character then, so capital D, and that gets rid of the rest of the line. And if you want to see what keys are available for suggestions to get an idea for this, if you come out to the repo for this project, you'll get instructions for how to set this up. And then there's a link here to the configuration that I've already got opened over here. Basically, these are the keys here that reset your hard counts. So if you cap out on K, just by using a number, you can resume using K. And that's because it wants to encourage you to think about the number of times you want to do something if you want to repeat a character. And then here are the restricted keys, which means they'll cap out after four or five uses. You also have the dis disabled keys here, like the up, down, left, and right. And then underneath of hints, this is where you could add your own hints. For example, here's the hint we just used for D and dollar. 
to use D instead of D dollar, or here's capital Y instead of Y dollar. And then I should say, this is the plugin that you want to add, run a setup on it. It has a few dependencies. And then otherwise for actions here, it's called hard time. There's an enable action. There's also disable and toggle. And then there's a report though. I actually haven't had any luck getting that to work. Oh, hey, it worked this time. Here you go. You can see all the different keys that I pressed. You can see the most frequent occurrence of the most problematic key. At the top here was pressing the K key or the J key. And further on down, you can see other things I need to practice. You can see on the right hand side how many times I hit a certain character. I did have trouble getting this to load. This is the first time this has worked for me. I almost wonder if you have to use hard time for a while before it builds up enough history to be able to run the report. So if it doesn't work initially, maybe give it some time, try to practice the keys a little bit more and then see if the report will work for you. All right, and now there's hard time here. If you need to disable it for some reason, you can do that. Now you should be able to use the key. Yeah, see, this is the other issue I had and I couldn't get this one to resolve, but I actually cannot get the darn thing to disable. And that's okay, that's not a big deal to disable it. You can also just comment out the setup step here. And of course, once you restart then, now you can just, to your heart's content, go up and down with the letters J and K or left and right with the letters L and H. So if you feel like you have some work to do to get familiar with the keyboard actions in Vim, this is definitely a plugin to put in. Just start using it, plug it in. Yes, it starts up when you start up Vim, which means it's gonna be there and annoy the heck out of you. But that means you're also gonna to have to take the time to go, okay, if that's the hard way, why don't I take a moment and figure out what the easier way is? And that way I'll learn something now and not save it for the future when I may never get around to it.